Uh, good morning. This is uh, the Black Blogger. I'm celebrating uh, today the life of the Reverend Ralph David Abernathy. Dr. Abernathy or Reverend Abernathy passed away on April the 17th, 1990, 28 years ago. Reverend Ralph Abernathy was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s best friend. He called Martin Michael and Martin Luther King called him David. They were very close friends. So today I'm going to pay honor and homage to Reverend Ralph Abernathy by reading two pieces. One, the um, release that he wrote on April 7th regarding the assassination of Martin Luther King and also his speech that he gave at the Poor People's Campaign. And this is the black man, read aloud hours celebrating the Reverend Ralph David Abernathy. At the time that he wrote this release, he was the president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The mortal heart of Martin Luther King was stopped by an assassin's bullet, but no, book, but no power on earth can stop his work. Those of us who have survived Dr. King have rededicated ourselves to continuing his work. Be it be known that our grief is deep, our Anguish is intense, and as mortal men and women, we are angry at the senseless, depraved act that snuffed out the life of our leader. Take heed, however, that we are pledged to continue our nonviolent struggle for the liberation of all oppressed people, even more militantly than in the past. The existence of some Unhappy outbreaks should not obscure the fact that a moral social upheaval has erupted in our nation. Anger, anguish, and the sense that the nation failed to hear Dr. King have gripped the minds of millions, black and white, Christian Jew and unbeliever. They are demanding that we now do what we should have done and to do it fully, promptly, and unconditionally. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference will go on armed with its 10 years of intimate training and guidance from Dr. King. To us, he is still alive and still in Memphis because the garbage men for whom he was fighting are still there. So on Monday, we of the SCLC will return to Memphis to conduct the nonviolent march he planned. His widow, Miss. Mrs. Coretta King will interrupt her morning to be with me in leading this march. Secondly, the Washington's Poor People campaign, which she also planned, will take place. In one sense, the Poor People's campaign has already begun. From every quarter of the nation, the demand for racial justice and economic security is thundering. Some of it is expressed in violence. Dr. King and I and all of the SCLC abhor violence, just as much as we abhor poverty and justice and racial discrimination. Our prescription for ending the current violence and to avoid future violence is for Congress to enact legislation at once that guarantees a job to all, and for those unable to work a guaranteed annual income to ensure a decent life. We will go to Washington, D.C. for this program and for other needs. But if, the, but if the Congress, recognizing that the assassination of Dr. King has created a crisis, will enact these measures, the healing of the nation's wounds can begin immediately. In losing Dr. King, the black people have made the greatest sacrifice in their history. Such a loss can only be redeemed by a social gain of the same magnitude. 
White America has the opportunity to rise to greatness at this moment by burying hesitation and delay and by properly honoring the most moral man of this century by liberating black Americans and all the poor, black and white. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference pledges that it will go on in the spirit of nonviolence with a determined struggle for racial and economic justice. Under its black leadership, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference will collaborate with all black and white Americans as individuals and organizations to rid our nation of its monstrous evil of racism. Persons who feel that the loss of Dr. King may signal the loss of passion for our dedication to freedom, let them take note that I stand with my colleagues as prophets of, the, of Martin Luther King, and we will be relentless in our nonviolent pursuit for freedom and human dignity by whatever means necessary, political, economic, social, and spiritual. Canon John Dunn once said in a poem, Death, thou shalt die. We will dedicate ourselves to erasing the death of Dr. King by fulfilling the goals of his life. Then we'll be able to say that he has passed on, but he has not died. And that is Dr. Ralph Abernathy on April the 7th, 1968. 